we're going to take a look at hard and soft acids and bases. This is essentially a classification system that helps us keep track of what acids or electron acceptors commonly go with what bases or electron donors. So over on the left here, we can see some lithium ions, calcium ions. They're from this left-hand part of the periodic table. And things on that part of the periodic table are very frequently found in combination with counter ions that contain oxygen from over here. On the other hand, something like cadmium uh, here is more likely to be found with counter ions such as sulfur or selenium. And this sort of system doesn't just apply to ions. So for instance, a, a neutral gold atom might be expected to stick with a neutral sulfur atom, uh, as, as we see here. So this is a classification system for ionic compounds, but also other sorts of Lewis acid base interactions. What this leads to is uh, a portion of the periodic table that's likely to form cations or to at least perform as acids um, being divided into the hard acids over on the left here as well as in the left part of the P block. So these things all tend to have pretty high charge. So going from potassium to calcium to scandium, titanium, vanadium, we're often talking plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, plus five, very commonly in nature. And that's as highly oxidized as each of those elements can go. Um, so they've all lost their outer, outer electrons altogether and they are reduced to their preceding noble gas configurations. So hard acids frequently involve high charge and in turn because they are uh, going down to the previous shell in electron configuration, these things tend to be small. Soft acids on the other hand tend to be a bit larger. You're talking second and third row transition metals and the charges are plus one, or plus two, relatively low charge uh, and sometimes large atoms we're talking about. Things that are in between of course can be borderline. They're somewhere between a hard acid and a soft acid. If we look at the part of the periodic table that we left off before over to the right, these are things that are often anions and are good electron donors. And the hard bases are the ones that are very electronegative. Uh, they also, because they're electronegative and hold their electrons tightly, um, they also tend to be small. Whereas the less electronegative atoms here are a little larger. So this is all a sort of a relative comparison, and that's always the case in hard and soft acids and bases, usually speaking in relative terms, comparing one atom to another. But these larger, softer bases are often found with the larger, softer acids. The smaller, harder bases are often found with the smaller, harder acids. Now there are other factors that come into play with hard and soft acids and bases. So for instance, uh, conjugation uh, tends to soften a base. But these are the basics that we'll start with right now. 